How does football, volleyball, track, or wrestling have anything to do with ranching? Today, we share some cultural ties of Montana ranchers and farmers with local sports. Welcome to Hash Knife Hangouts. I'm Kalen. My co-host and father is Brandon. If you enjoy the channel, please take a moment to hit the like button. And while you're at it, subscribe. Don't be a stranger. Make sure you comment too. Uh, today we're talking sports. Recent things have happened in the NCAA. People haven't realized, which I'm sure dad has not because he is kind of in a rural part of the world. <laughs> Doesn't pay attention to those things. And even if he did, he probably wouldn't care. Uh, What's NCAA? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. See, that's my point. Um, if you're not familiar, the NCAA or the National Collegiate Association for Athletes made a new and improved realignment of schools and what most people would say districts. It's actually, you know, conferences, you know, the big, for example, dad, on, the only two teams that actually matter to us montana and montana state montana state being number one montana being a close but far Third. distant number two Third. uh <laughs> the the uh the 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 conference that they are in are you familiar with that what is that called okay it's in it's in the frontier college frontier system. there you go no 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 no. Oh. big it's, sky there it is big sky conference yeah okay now if you if you didn't know this, Big Sky Conference became so popular because they had some absolute powerhouses in it that it started getting more and more people into it, just like the SEC has had recently, which is LSU, Alabama, oh, yeah. Arkansas, Mizzou. Like that's the SEC, right? Um, so kind of the same thing, except at a lower division within Division One, right? Okay. So new things have happened. There was the Pac-12. And that was Oregon, Oregon State, uh, USC. You're talking kind of, you know, mostly the Western region. Western State, There's okay. Colorado, I think, is uh, was Pac-12. Now it's been completely realigned. So the discussion is, you know, clearly the schools are making decisions based off of money. Mm, money. What <laughs> sport brings up the most money for uh, teams or for schools in the fall? It's football, football. I, and I mean, I wouldn't even say just fall. It's like all year. It, it brings up a lot of money for pretty much most of the year. That's why they have such a massive roster and they're okay with it. But I wanted to kind of tie that. We're going to discuss this, but we're going to tie it back to the original, the, the OG. What's OG? Remember what OG stands for? Old, old guys, old no. original gangsters. Original. <laughs> Original gangster. <laughs> yeah. Right? The, the, yeah. The, okay. the OG sc- stuff, which was high school and college, right? So we're going to go back to high school times, how that has an impact on us in our culture as ranchers, farmers. So um, we're, we're on the subject. So let's just talk about it. They, they said the Pac-12 essentially has gotten realigned i don't even remember i'm trying to find it right now because i have a million things open on my uh computer to try and find it these are all montana ones though uh oh here we go so you've got washington sorry washington huskies oregon oregon state you've got usc um san diego state now they are like aligned with like purdue notre dame wisconsin uh indiana big schools those are big schools but where are they like physically located nowhere Regionally, near each they're, other yeah they're midwest and and the west coast i mean yeah and then the and east you've got, and then you've got colorado um arizona arizona state all getting aligned with like places like tcu and baylor in texas Where's, what's tcu is that tennessee Te- uh, texas christian university oh, the, texas, the Horn okay. Frogs. yeah okay so you're well, looking that's a little you know, closer sure sure but you when you see this map it's just got lines all over the place of people that like aren't supposed to be there. So now the question has now gone to, okay, if they're not aligned like that, what's that going to do for like, you know, football's once a week, right? 
how many times do uh, college students play for basketball a week? How many times do they play for volleyball or, you know, things like tennis, you know, right. cause this, these realignments have impacts on other cl- uh, types of sure. sports, not just football. It's just start bumping, bumping other sports out. Oh yeah. And so now like, that's a real concern. And I, I legitimately do feel bad for those students, but you know, you're thinking of somebody else showed a, a better realignment. So like, instead of doing the Southeast conference, which has so many powerhouses, they're like, Hey, let's break that up a little bit. And the Southeast would be actually the Southeast. So you'd get like Auburn, Alabama, Miami, huh. uh, kind of makes sense. Florida state. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Shocker. Right. Atlantic coast would be Duke, North Carolina, Georgia. This is almost like gerrymandering for, you know, oh, yeah. electoral college type stuff. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So, or, or, so yeah. all of that, right. Now, the question that really leads to all of it, everything, like everything I just said is like the big boys, right? right. But how does that relate to us? Well, <laughs> back to number one and number two at our hearts here. Um, is it time for Montana and Montana State to move up to the big boy realm? Because the last probably 10 to 15 years, they've been on the cusp of just dominance, like mm-hmm. year in and year out. They might not be the number one every single year, but the two of them are top three to top five every single year for the past probably decade and a half. And it's like, do they move out of this big conference that is the Big Sky Conference, which has so many teams? And let's see if I can Google it real quick to see. I think it's like 18 teams. How many teams? Uh, are I don't in know. Big that's Sky? almost like that's almost like taking a rural team and putting them up against a, you know, like a team from big Billings. Team. Right. Teams. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the level of play there. Do, can they compete? Yeah, they might be. They might be big in their conference. Right. But will they really compete, or are they able to compete with uh, in, in another area? I mean, they could be. Sure. They could just get pounded for the rest of eternity, just because they don't have one the recruitment tools, money, or maybe. Well, and I don't know. I mean, it used to be a big joke that college athletes or you know pe teachers um yeah you know i mean really it, it, you know they just they barely got a degree but they played ball sure and i don't know if that's the case anymore i suspect there's probably still some of that you know um well, who knows? but i don't know what other recruitment tools besides your, what you can get for an education and and yeah. there's some smart kids out there that are i mean some of physics degrees you know oh, that yeah. are playing football you know i mean there was, a, there was three, actually, I should have say on both offense and defense when I was going to school um, for Montana State, there was about a half dozen of those starters. So I think there was like four offense and two defense that were engineer majors. Right. <laughs> and they all graduated with engineer degrees. So it's like <clears throat> trying to yeah. be a full time student and and also doing uh, that, you know, well, a, a, and an I, athletic and prowess I... like that, like. Yeah. Yeah. And I know one of those guys. Yeah. And yep. he is not just smart. The kid is incredibly smart. I don't think he studied in college. Probably and still didn't. Played. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he, he was a stud on the a football stud. field. He, he actually ended up working for me uh, in in uh, my past life. He got a job where I was at. Yeah. And so smart, smart guy. Absolutely stud athlete. Um, I think he went to the combine and he was, oh, he was did looking he? at he did and he was looking at going pro, wanted to, but he'd had some injuries and stuff too. I think that was yep, a big concern. I remember that. Yeah. So, but I got a lot of respect for that kid. Uh yeah, brilliant, brilliant mind. But here's if we were to move Montana and Montana State up, right? So instead of playing Cal Poly, Eastern Washington, um, there's there's a lot i'm just missing them right now sorry folks but those are some some big ones right now those have been some of the the more impactful ones the last few years but there's also you know in the division one mountain west conference is colorado university or sorry university of colorado um or maybe it is cu they they do a little weird down there uh there's csu which is where i'm currently going to school for my master's then there's uh university of wyoming there's Utah State, there's Utah, there's Baylor, or not Baylor, uh, Brigham Young, there's Arizona State and Arizona. And I feel like with those, oh, Boise State, that would be regionally aligned to us. 
mm-hmm. and still be relatively same size school. So that's why I say like they might be the little dogs for a little bit, but I feel like if they played in that kind of a conference, Montana, Montana yeah. state would probably not be too bad. Yeah, that probably, I mean, it sounds, and I, and I don't know these schools at all. I, you know how I am about the sports stuff, you know, yeah, but... we're going to have to fix that when I move to Montana. <laughs> But when when we're looking at the size of the schools, I guess is kind of what I'm looking at too. Yeah. You know, the, they're somewhat comparable that way because you can't put I don't think Montana against USC. I mean, it's not even close. No. You know, not no. even close. I mean, so and that's that'd be my my thing is you want these schools to be on an even playing field. You know, and I'm all about you know putting your best people up, but let's face it. You know, I was a basketball star when about way back in the day, and when I was in high school in a class C rural school, I there's no way I could probably play on a class B team even then. In okay. High school. Yeah, I mean, it, it just didn't happen. There was there's very limited uh, number of kids in our school. You know, just about everybody went out for basketball. Just about everybody played. Well, coming <laughs> from all of the conferences were that way, or, or all give of them you... did our conferences. But to give you a really quick comparison, both from the two respective schools, the one that I think of the most often, if it's not Montana, I think of Wyoming, right? Because mm-hmm. it's the closest to us. Wyoming, University of Wyoming, there's only one school for Wyoming, and that's right. it. 12,249 students as of fall 2019 is what their their records show. You, So what, what was it? 12-3, let's call it. 12-3. Montana State is 16 7, 16,688. So, size wise, they are comparable. Yeah. So, that's why I'm saying, you know, if they're going to be like that size, it's if they stay in a conference like that size with other schools that I think are probably also comparable Colorado, yeah. Colorado State, in, in uh, Idaho, I think those would all be, I think it would be okay for them now to go to like the Pac 12, like you said. Oof, I don't think that's gonna happen. USC, no, 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 no. Oregon, Oregon State. I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I think what you, what will happen in a very short time if you did something like that, you're gonna look at these athletes and go, they're gonna go. I don't want to be on a losing team. Yeah, yeah. And you're gonna and you're not gonna have any recruitment because you don't win, and right. people inherently want to win. Well, so I think you just you you wouldn't be able to attract some of the really good talent that you can currently under the and that's. That is an interesting one to see this year. And here's why. Because I know you don't know this. You know of a guy. Used to be a pretty darn good ball player. Deion Sanders. Prime time. That dude was a punk. stud too. He was, but he was a gang banging punk. Yeah, I, I know. But <laughs> I think he kind of got his stuff straightened out, honestly. Uh, I hope so. It and sounds like it, but yeah. He, he'd he been uh, a color analyst and a... Mm-hmm. uh. Uh, a really good kind of just a, an insider to the game for a long yeah. time for NFL network. Well, okay. a couple years ago he took over cause his sons were going to school, uh, school to college. He took over as their, their, uh, their coach. Oh, turned, o- turned a program around. No kidding. Turned a small program around. Okay. And I don't remember what they were called. I'd have to Google. I'm not going to right now. He got offered a job at Colorado. And so this year, he will be the head coach for Colorado. With him, there's been a lot of discussion because he wiped the benches, both intentionally and non-intentionally. When he came, he said, hey, I'm bringing some players with me. I know they've got talent. They're willing to play for me. I'm bringing them with me. And he brought them, and they came. There were some people that were upset, and they left. They're like, I'm not playing for that guy. If he's doing this, like I, I don't stand for it. They have the highest amount of transfers and changeover in any other school. And this was like, I think a school that went maybe, what was it like three and eight or something like that last year or three and nine. It was not good. They were not good. So that'll be an interesting one. Kind of what you're talking about of let's wipe the slate clean. Let's see how we play, you know, to going up to that next level. Cause he's, it's, it's not a program. It's a coach, but he's essentially taking a bunch of, new college kids not used to this program and they're just wiping the slate clean. They're going to be like, okay, let's find out how this works. Is it going to win or is it going to lose? Like you talked about. Well, and sometimes, sometimes the coaching 
call it a program if you want, becomes pretty incestuous and yeah, that's very true. stagnant. Yeah. And so that can be either a, a good thing, depending on on how it is overall, how how robust his program is. But yeah, you have a little dip there where yeah, you don't have a lot of recruitment. You only got and I don't know his talent. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes there. I would I would hope that he wouldn't bring, you know, 40 guys that he wanted and you know, right. completely wipe it out. But it's you're using talent from your school, uh, not not hired gladiators. And let's face it, they're all hired gladiators in one way or another. Uh, in on, in college ball, the modern you're recruiting version, yeah. people from wherever, right? So, um, you know that can it can alienate some people and run them off, or they get mad, and or you know what? There's also that defensive thing where, ha, huh, geez, or really, I'm probably not going to be able to play because I'm not yeah. quite as good as these guys. So, fine, I'll quit. I'll go somewhere else. Sure. Could be some of that. And if that's the case, hey, good riddance. She might be holding us back anyway. Right. There's all kinds of different ways to look at that. It can be one of the best things that happen. On average, I would guess they may have a slump for a year or two till they right. kind of get that program rolling and consistency takes over. And then, you know, uh, usually some some good years after that. I mean, it's kind of like anything else. Or it can just take off like crazy. Unlikely, I would, I would guess, but you never know. You never know what can happen. Yeah, and I'm trying to find some numbers here for you. It looks like somewhere between 45 to 56 ish transfers total, and you're looking at in college, it's a 75 man roster, so that's a significant amount. You get a little over half. That's transfers out, not in, in. in and out. I don't know, uh, okay. you know, total, but so you could have 20 in and 35 out. out. Sure. So yeah. you don't. Okay. So a little misleading. We don't know for sure. Yeah, but okay. anyway, that's kind of how I thought. I was like, you know, because like I said. A unique opportunity. Things have changed significantly. It'd be interesting, yeah. especially with, you know, now you've got names like Deion Sanders in here. It might be a soft program, a soft region. You could potentially get Montana, Montana State, because they're powerhouses in their own right, in their own place. But to move up, it would be an interesting thing. And so people are really thinking about it. They're considering it. They think it would be an opportunity for us. But I'm with you. Ultimately, I think you would kind of lose the small town feel with it. Um, And I don't know if Montana is willing to give that up yet, frankly. Well, and and really, both Montana and Montana State teams have a significantly high population of local Montana kids that play for them. We do, and we're very proud about that. Very proud about that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great thing. It gives our local kids an opportunity, yeah. and they do well with it. Uh, one of the one of the things I wonder about is how that how that goes from that particular move at, at the college level because i don't even watch pro football anymore i you know i, I don't either last couple of years, years i just no interest but i love None. watching college because i i just enjoy the I back and forth a lot of times those kids yeah. they they have a whole lot more try in them <laughs> yeah i mean they really do it's like they're not they're not big leaguing anymore they're they're these kids are still trying working hard and i like to see that it's a fast game love it well, and there's more of a, I feel a more of a cult with college too, because people from all over the nation will root for you because that's where they came from. They have more True. of a, you know, Montana, Montana State. That's that's where I'm from, and I right. I relate to those guys. Whereas right. everybody else would be like, oh yeah, that's an impressive team, you know. But like, Denver Broncos would be the closest for us in right. pros, and we're like, okay, it's down in Denver, cool. Like that's right. kind of, <laughs> I, I, well, much more indifference to it. But you're right. I mean, there is a more of a connection there because I know one guy that he was always a Dallas Cowboys fan, and then he married a gal from Alabama, and now all of a sudden it's all about Alabama. <laughs> Roll Tide, know? yeah. That was not even, yeah, it was not even on his radar. So he went from a diehard pro fan to this, you know, diehard college fan. I'm like, I think the only time he'd ever been down there is that meeting her parents when they got married, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever floats your boat, you know, he might've really had a great experience at a football game down there and just was hooked. I don't know. I, but you know, it's kind of funny that people will choose a team, you know, right. there's teams that I will choose based on who they're playing. I don't really have much of a real following for pro teams anymore. You know, I just don't, but some of the college teams I'll look at and I kind of like the underdog, you know, I yep. kind of like to see somebody really try hard and, and overcome some some really hard adversity. It's, it's a good thing. No, I, I agree. 
I, I don't know. I think there's something special about college and in, in a lot of different ways um, that, yeah, you, you kind of touched on them. Um, How does this equate to ranching? Well, I'm getting to it. Okay. So we just, you actually kind of touched on it for a second, which was we've got a lot of local kids that end up playing for the um, Montana state or Montana um, teams. And I wanted to di- get a segue into Let's start with the mascots. What are some unique mascots that we have in Montana at the high school level? Probably to me, the funniest one is the opine fighting porcupines. <laughs> so I don't have opine. I've got Nashua. That's what I found. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nashua. It's Nashua. Okay, yeah. yeah, they're very close. Now it's a Nashua yeah. fighting porcupines. I am so sorry, Nashua. Yeah, I'm I I absolutely agree with you. Uh yeah. now I have two. There's I've got the most unique and they're from Montana and then I've also got the most popular from Montana by numbers. Um so I'll start they go this is alphabetical. So Anaconda Copperheads, there's a yep. a tip of the hat to our Copper Kings from Copper way back Kings. when. Yep. Yep. Um the Belfry Bats, which I know exactly where Belfry is. Yep. The Chinook Sugar Beaters. Sugar Beaters, yeah. And if you're not familiar with the Sugar Beaters, they entered a national contest a couple years ago um, for the best mascot in the nation. And I think they came in somewhere around third to six, something oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know they that. Were, and it was, they also showed off their helmet and everything. And they got some traction and people were like, what's a Sugar Beater? Well, <laughs> somebody who uh, raises and, and farms Sugar Beets. Sugar Beets, yeah. So um, the next one was the Forsyth, not doggies, Forsyth doggies, doggies. and yeah. they will get in a fist fight over that. Oh, yeah, it's doggies, <laughs> yes. Then we've got 30 miles down the road from us, Harloton Engineers, and that's because they used to be a, I always say it the wrong, is it a turnhouse for the engineer? Uh, the roundhouse. Engineer? Roundhouse. They were the end of the Milwaukee line. Milwaukee yeah. Railroad was right there. They had a roundhouse that turned those engines around and sent them back east yeah uh and what i should probably i should probably a quick thing for forsyth forsyth is named after a uh a general forsyth who was like colonel miles colonel miles uh he was named the miles city custer custer montana is named after custer same thing named after general forsyth dogies i think that was kind of like a collection point for uh railroad for uh cattle to market is that correct Miles city was i don't know so much about foresight they could have i mean everybody had a little stockyards there sure. where they collected and and probably was the, the distance it is from Miles city being what 40 miles yeah that's yeah probably a little bit smaller one but yeah i'm i'm not wouldn't be surprised at all about that okay then uh just down the road from billings about 15 20 miles is laurel the laurel locomotives and that's again a big railroad town so that's why you're getting that uh, again, Nashua porcupines. I don't know what the story was behind that one. I don't care. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I've always liked that. I thought that was just cool. Uh, then this one, this is one of my favorites, actually, even when we were wrestling. Powell County Wardens. Yeah. Because that is where the state prison is. Montana State are, Prison is in Powell County. They are the wardens. Yep. Uh, then I didn't realize this. The Sunburst Refiners. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. Is that an oil or, or gas well area? Is that a uh, coal maybe? It, 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 no, not, not part of the country. It's probably gas, natural gas, gas okay. or gas um, of some sort. Yeah, very well could be. I didn't know that. I've always just known it as Sunburst. Never thought about what the yeah. uh, mascot was, but they're Sunburst, I believe, is a class C. They're a very small school. Now, the last right. one that's on here is Sweetgrass Sheep Herders. It was a big sheep country, so they did a tip of the hat to a lot big of the timber. yeah, yeah, a lot of the recent guys. And yeah, they go by Sweetgrass because it's Sweetgrass County. It's not uh big timber sheep herders. Um, and then there's one more yeah, that I thought used, of. It used to be the it used to be the big timber herders. Did they? When <laughs> I yeah, but I mean things changed. Yeah, uh, I've always known them as Sweetgrass when I was in high yeah, school. Yeah, Sweetgrass so. County. Yeah. Uh, now one one that's on there is uh oh, I just I just lost it, but they're the horsemen. Um, I forgot. I I forgot what town it is. I'm sorry, but they are the horsemen, and 
they're, they look like Mustangs. And people will think, oh, it's Mustangs. Like, no, 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 that's the Horseman. <laughs> oh, I don't know which one that is. Not uh, Noxon. Oh, I don't think Noxon was. I, I didn't think they were the Horsemen. I thought yeah. they were like the Red Devils, Noxon Red Devils. No, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to even for time. I'm not even going to worry about it. But now yeah. I'm going to go to the 14 most popular mascot names in Montana. Coming in at the top one is the Bulldogs with 12 different schools. Oh, wow. A lot of those, a lot of those are some of the the more um, urban areas. Billings, uh, I don't right. think Bozeman does. But Butte definitely does. Oh yeah. Uh, Harden. There's also Shoto, Harden. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Panthers coming in with nine schools. The Eagles, there's eight. Now there's one in parentheses that says there is one Golden Eagle, and there that you go. is. That is Lewis and uh, Lewis Lewis Town, Lewis Town in Fergus County. Fergus County, thank you, Fergus County. Pirates, uh, there's seven schools with pirates, seven with tigers, seven with warriors. There is one Scarlet Warrior. Uh, Scarlet Warrior, what is that? I don't know. It doesn't say. Huh? I know. I think Ronan is. Oh, uh, warriors. Yeah. I don't know if they're the Scarlet Warriors, but I know they're the Warriors and Ronan. If anybody's ever been to the Montana State Wrestling Tournament, it's very cool because they will go in with their headdresses in the parade of athletes, and it is an absolute, absolutely yeah, pretty cool, cool experience. Uh, six Wildcats, which Bobcats is kind of what you'd call those. Um, five Trojans, five Rams, five Cougars, five Falcons, five Mustangs. I was a Mustang. Um, four Bronx, four Wolves. And then 10 schools tied with three. Um, and I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't, it doesn't say, but um, yeah, there's all sorts of other cool ones in here. Blue ponies. That's uh, you know, which one that is ever Haver. Yep. Uh, let's see here. We got red Raiders, uh, renegades, rustlers, savages. I'm surprised. Some of these haven't changed. There was one Redskins for red lodge has now been changed to, I think the mountaineers. Was it that or the Rams? Oh, you're right. It might be the Rams now. See, you're ahead of this more than I am. Only because that was a big deal. And yeah, we had a bunch of folks move in and were offended when it was an honor. And the whole town, the name of the town is based on the Red Lodge. It is. Yeah. Indians. The Red Lodge. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So that, again, That's... those are. All the, all the schools that I was talking about. So what does that tie into, as you asked, ranching and farming? Well, it's a weekly and cultural and community event that brings everybody together. That's where I was leading. It's been 27 minutes and 30 seconds, and I finally got to the punchline. <laughs> yeah, you got a slow lead up there. Um, yeah. Um. So the, the thing is, you know, it, it's easy to say for football. Football's Friday night lights, man. It's an American thing, right? The question is going to be, you know, what makes it such, why are these schools, why are these mascots, these unique ones and these most popular ones, why are they such a tie to ranching and farming? Do you think in Montana, I have my own ideas, but I'd like to hear yours because it's not just fall time. It's also winter time. And it's also springtime. The only time that they're not out there watching sports is summertime. And that's because the kids are helping them work. <laughs> True. I mean, you should have seen my track coach my senior year in high school. He wanted me to go out for track. I, you know, we didn't have football. I wish we had football. God, I would have loved to play football. We had basketball and track. That was we even actually had men's basket or volleyball in yeah. high school and in conference. But wanted me to go out for track, and I said, "Well, okay, I can, but I can't necessarily beat every track meet." He goes, "What do you mean?" I said, we're calving in the spring and I can't get to practice. If I, if my grandpa or my dad tells me I got to be doing this, I can't be in track. And so I practiced some when I could. And then he, I couldn't go to divisionals where I, I went to district, couldn't go to divisionals where I, one of the things I did was throw a javelin. And I was never good at that. Were you good at that? I was okay. It turned out turned <laughs> out that it. I would have placed probably around third or fourth in divisionals. Okay. 
and he yeah, was, I couldn't get it past yeah. 60 feet. <laughs> oh yeah. He come. Oh yeah. No, no, I, I could do better now. He, yeah. but he came back and was just livid with me after divisionals. Cause I would have went to state. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's like, yeah, he, he, never, he knew he he's know. like, yeah, I got, I got an athlete that could have gone pretty right. far here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cause I could go over, a, I can go well over a hundred foot. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And so, um, but that's part of the other thing, you know, and I worked playing basketball like every other kid does it, whatever sport it is, you're working. And, uh, the coach would always want you to rest on game day. Yeah. Are you out of your mind? I'm feeding cows. I mean, <laughs> we're yeah. working and I'd get to get off a little bit early so I could clean up and go into town and either catch a bus for the, the ride to where we were going to play or you play there. So that's that's rural montana and everybody's behind their their teams when they go i mean it's yeah. it can be crazy it can and talk about emotional meltdowns that people have. it's just crazy sometimes well and i noticed um so you did you did volleyball basketball track right right and i did football wrestling track so the only thing that we actually had similar was track right right. (laughs) um i found especially with wrestling because wrestling's more tied to the community too i feel because there's certain communities that there's they're much more adamant about wrestling than they are anything else yep uh more of the smaller schools were better about supporting their athletes than the bigger schools which is crazy to me because you'll have something like billing senior high has a big group of people a big roster for wrestling but in relation to a school from nowhere montana like arley right Right. um and arley is actually a pretty good size school i should do circle circle had i think a couple years two or three wrestlers at max and there was a couple years there was one baker baker's another good one yeah baker's a great example baker's oil field country but they'll get a full roster of kids from a small school of maybe 200 High school, kids in high school, but the entire town travels with Baker. Right. Circle with two or three college kids. It was a whole clan of, of family members that would come right. and join. You know, it's I felt like the smaller schools had much more of a presence by by um per capita, so to speak, than the bigger well, schools. And I think part of that is that is that the sports weren't split so much. You didn't have so many people and so yeah. many other different sports that they were concentrated into what few sports you had. And that's, that's again, like you said, that's the, that's the community, you know, uh, weekly ritual is to, is to support those kids and, and go to it. I remember, I remember people coming to my games. I remember going to other kids. I remember going yeah. to your guys' games and, and uh, you know, matches. I, I always felt that was interesting too, because we wouldn't get a lot of support with wrestling because basketball was big where I went to school. Um, but it was always interesting to see that we would have a wrestling event once or maybe two times a year. And the basketball kids were always interested in watching us because they'd never seen wrestling really. And so they would, before they'd go play or, or after they'd play, they would come in and they would watch us do at least a round where we had, you know, a lineup of people don't know this, but it's a, it's a duel. You go from the weight classes all the way through and you say, Hey, I got a 160 pounder. You got a 160 pounder. They wrestle it off. And that's how it works. And they do that all the way through the roster. Those guys would come watch all of us wrestle and they'd be like, Whoa, that was cool. How you did that. I'm like, yeah, man, like that was a pretty simple move. Like it just, we got the better of them (laughs) and they they didn't understand the intricacies of it. So it was kind of cool to watch their eyes kind of bug out a little bit. (laughs) Well, and, and me the same way as a parent watching that, I, my wrestling, uh, repertoire is to watch, you know, the team develop and from the time they're little guys and I just know that indiscriminately, you just want to yell out, wizard, wizard, wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, but uh, that goes to your other point, too, of, of how exciting people get. Because oh, you'll see some moms and some dads oh, absolutely go bonkers. <laughs> you know, and you catch yourself doing doing this. You and you're, oh, you're, you're kind of giving them a little leverage. Get you that know? shoulder out. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's true. It, it, and I think, though, that for parents are parents and and they're going to support their kids. And, and I mean, with the most emotion they possibly can, but there's something different about wrestlers 
and and the wrestling parents and a wrestling mother oh my god they're like half psycho yeah some of them are psycho yeah <laughs> yeah for sure but uh, but a bunch of uh, tough mothers too yeah you know kid gets a nosebleed and they stop the action for what is it two minutes to be able to get the nose under control i think you've got a total of five minutes blood time for a whole match yeah okay and these moms moms are like okay yeah you know they get used to seeing blood where if you saw that in a in any other sport basketball oh my god they'd probably come in down out of the stands to you know save them but uh you know that's just the name of the game with with wrestling and moms are moms are for the most part, they're pretty tough about it. Yeah. The the thing I wanted to bring in though is, you know, it's a it it tends to be a community event where everybody gathers because you'll also notice a lot of the guys, a lot of the dads will come in mud caked or they got snow on them or whatever, because it's you're talking winter time usually. And they'll just sit next to each other and be like, Well, how are the cows? <laughs> and it just kind of <laughs> starts from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When are you gonna calve? You yep. didn't started yet, you know. Yeah, there's I mean it is. It's a it's a community event, but uh a good way to people to get together and it's it's let's face it, it's better than sitting in front of the TV. Well, and that leads to the next point, entertainment. Sometimes it's the only entertainment you have, especially mm-hmm. if you have places like uh a great a great film that I saw in high school was called Class C and it's about basketball in rural Montana. You got mm-hmm. places like Rapple J read point and those teams will combine together because they don't have enough people in their schools and they will play as one cohesive team. And that requires traveling on both sides of the, of the community to get to one game. And it's the only entertainment that the families in that area have because they're either out taking care of animals because they're so secluded from the rest of Billings, Bozeman, big timber, something like that, that they end up coming together to come see these cool events and stuff and and that's interesting you named two towns there that when i was playing when i was in high school um those are two two different towns that i played in the same conference with we would play rapple j they're 26 miles south of us and then we'd go over to uh, reed point we'd play them they would they were their own standalone teams and uh fact is reed point had such a small gym it used to be a barn yeah, and you can and still the, see it from the highway. You can see it from the highway, and, and and the lines were barely regulation. The way you, there was no way you could take the ball out and not cross the line with your feet on the sidelines. So what the way you took the ball out to stay legal was you leaned against the wall and threw the ball in. That was that was that was how you did it. the The top, the loft was actually where the changing rooms were for the cheerleaders. Was was the old loft? Oh, crazy. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, and they had a stage in there, but that was a very small gym and a low ceiling so you had to you know if you had any kind of arc on your ball at all it was crazy you you, you'd hit the ceiling but and that was out but um these are small schools that as time has gone on we've lost our populations and we were a standalone team here uh and now we don't even have a team uh we we co-op with harlotown the engineers oh you guys co-op with harlow and not with Lavina. Yeah, and I wish we would co-op with Lavina, but here's the thing. Lavina was its own standalone team and Raggate, yeah. and we were bitter rival enemies. Yeah. I was gonna and say the there's there's why... some inter there's some actually not inter <laughs> intra. There's some intra county politics going on with that. <laughs> yeah, because 1911 we broke off from Muscle Show County and or uh uh not true. 1911 Muscle Shell County was formed from Fergus County, parts of Yellowstone, and Roundup and and uh, Lavina vied for the county seat. Well, Roundup mm-hmm. got it. Yep. And then in 1920, then we took a little bit off of Muscle Shell County, became Golden Valley County. Lavina wanted to be the county seat. Rygate wanted it. Rygate had more votes, so it became. And so since then, it has been a bitter. I mean, to this day, there are people that are just, and they weren't even there then, but it's yep. just kept on. So Levina had their team, but now Levina and Broadview, which was another standalone team that we played, they co-op as a team. So that's kind of this great sucking sound from all of the rural areas and our populations that these towns are getting smaller and smaller in order to maintain some kind of 
sports teams and that entertainment, they have to co-op with other towns. And that is a significant amount of driving for some of them. Well, and unfortunately, it also has impacts on education. You know, we've had mm-hmm. discussions with mom on here about education, how it's hard for them to find teachers. That's why she she kind of came out of retirement and she now does it part time because they needed a science teacher, but they didn't really need a full time science teacher. And she felt like she was OK, not going back full time. So it's just it's things like that. It also impacts other parts of the community, which are the future and the kids. Well, and it just happened to work out that way for her. She doesn't, because there's not as many kids, she doesn't have to do different sections of the same yeah. class, but they still get the full, whatever they, you know, have offered for their their classes. And, and they want, you know, uh, hard sciences like that. They want them in the morning when those kids are fresh. So yeah. by noon, quarter after 12, she's done for the day. Yeah. But yeah, which is a whole lot different than she used to be. But yeah, same thing. It's, it's, it's a symptom of that. Um, and, and you know, that community, that sense of community. And I see it here locally, how the town doesn't seem to quite have that sense of, of community because people aren't gathering at the, at the uh, school. school every week for those, those games on a weekend. Interesting. So yeah. that, and that was going to be a follow-up question I had too, uh, because I grew up in Shepherd where there's, it's a suburban community from Billings, but um, it's much more of a community because people did come. You, you had basketball constantly, football, volleyball. Um, we didn't ever do track. We had softball. Um, you also had other events for you know the little kids because there's there were a, a good number of kids K through twelve that you could visit. Hmm. Moving to Rygate, I have not experienced that, so I will experience it when I move back home. What is the what is the impact on terms of the community as a whole in terms of when it comes to the uh the the county and cross county like you're saying does it feel like rygate and harlow are more of a community than just rygate or like the, to an extent does it make everything seem kind of closer or does it make it still feel like everything's much more further apart when it's it like still that? seems to me it seems further apart because and that's part probably mostly me because I was gone for a number of years yeah. and not part of the community. Don't have any kids in school here right now. Yeah. And so uh, some of the people that I knew from Harlow, they've done the same thing. They've left, they're gone. So there's a, a good number of people that I don't know there. And then, you know, we're not going to those games every weekend because, you know, we don't have any kids playing. Uh, we try to get to some of these games and we do, uh, whether it be volleyball for the girls or basketball for the boys and then basketball for the girls uh football for the boys and then with mom teaching at uh Levina then we we take in some games down there too so we we try to hit both towns yeah. um but I'll tell you what it's that's even tougher than you would think is uh you know we're busy too and at the end of a week she's like I'm I'm done you know and yeah. and so we don't always get to them, especially if you're going to travel a, a a great distance which there's not that much of that anymore uh, for us, but it is certainly for the teams because they got to go further and further uh, for some right. teams. It really surprises me, uh, you know, where I think last weekend Levina played Dutton and Power as a combined school. Clear, Yeah, clear up northwest of Great Falls, north wow. of Great Falls. That's a long ways to go for Class C schools. Yeah, well, and that's the thing too. So the more you have those smaller schools, so in Montana, it's not – uh, a double a triple a quadruple a getting bigger as you get more a's it's c is the smallest b is the next smallest and then a is a middle to upper tier and then double a is the biggest you'll have for a school yeah. and billings bozeman double a's butte double a they have to travel but it's interesting because it's almost as if they don't have to put on as many miles they have to travel to get to those bigger schools but it's not like what you just said, where they have to travel like the back highways, not the interstate, but the back highways and get other <laughs> towns to use as spokes to get to other locations. I can tell you, I've been on some hairy black ice, snowpack, wind blowing, 20 below back roads when we were playing. And it was like, yeah. I hope we make it. We trusted the bus driver and they were fantastic. Yep. Yep. You know, That's true. Great bus drivers. Well, the, and I, that goes to my last question, which was the difference between your generation and mine going to school. 
You got well, we the win. Or pill both ways. Well, I know that, that, obviously. That's what made you into who you are today. Um right. the 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 question is you got to see mine, which was I was afforded the opportunities to focus on school and sports, whereas you were talking already about you had to balance between the ranch or the ranches and sports and school. And really it came down to get your education, work on the ranch, and then when you had time, you could do school. Uh, what was what were kind of the differences in, in keeping in mind, you know, you're you came from a smaller school. I came from a slightly bigger school than you. Also, there were different sports. We already covered that. But in terms of school being tied into the ranch fabric or farming fabric of the communities and into, into us and then also kind of how sports were treated just in different in, in general. How, how did you kind of see the, the difference between your time and mine and Braden's? Well, sports weren't indifferent. I can tell you that because if uh, if they said we were going to not have a, a sports team or we weren't going to afford the community would go ape. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It was. Um, no, you don't take the sports away from them. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Was that more of because like, going back entertainment for the families yes. or because yes. of they wanted opportunities for the kids? Both. And it was Both. a pride. Of, you know, I mean, this is it's a pride thing between towns. I mean. The identity, your mascot is an identity of your town. Yeah. Believe it or not. I mean, I mean and we're, we're having that right now. I've been seeing stuff on social media. Right. Ry- has been the blue demons for a long time. And there's the been fighting blue demons, the fighting blue demons. And there's right. been some issues with that as of late. Yeah. So, you know, um, don't take their sports away. Don't screw with your sports. I mean, <laughs> it's just funny how people are. They may be a little bit more ambivalent about whether or not you're going to have, uh, uh, you know, a, a algebra two class, uh, or are we going to have geometry this year? And they go, ah, I guess they don't offer, but what? No basketball. Oh, yeah. we're not standing <laughs> for that. I yeah. mean, I mean, really that's kind of, uh, it, it is so ingrained in the community that that's, that's what's important, uh, to it. Cause it is so much of the identity of the, of the towns. And it, it's yeah. a thing that makes everything cohesive to it. The, the academics in the school really, are part of what the kids do, not what the the uh, community at large is is doing day after day or you know by week after week, right? But the, the I mean, going back to the question, the the difference between your time and my time, what would you what would you say is maybe similarities and differences between the two? Um, very similar in a lot of ways. It, it it's an all out. You be there. You support the the kids going. Um, uh you disappointed when you lose, especially if it's to the rival team, sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, those are, those are all very, very similar. Uh, we had to pack everything we had into uh, really basketball because uh, not a lot of people watch the track. I mean, they just didn't go. Track's a hard one to do because it's an all day event. It's an all weekend it event. It's not very a hard hours. Yeah. I mean, your mom and I went to a good number of you guys' track uh yeah, bless depends. your hearts because there were times where i didn't want to be there it was taken oh, all day <laughs> oh oh some of those are brutal and so uh you know but my my parents never went to a track meet yeah there's no way but uh you know later on in high school when i was a freshman some sophomore but mostly a freshman they didn't go to that many games partly they couldn't afford it honestly right. they couldn't afford to to drive the 30 miles and pay to get into watch play Things got a little better, and sophomore, junior, senior year, they were at every game, didn't matter where it was at. They they went, um, so that that is very much the same today as it is was then. Um, that that community pride is very similar. The same thing. I I mean, there's not a lot of difference in there. Yeah. The, I think the 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 last thing I would add is, what was the most meaningful sporting event that you had growing up? Was it your senior night basketball? Was it your first time starting? What was your. Oh, first time starting was a big deal, but that's fleeting. I mean, that's yeah. Um, it's not, there's not much of an accomplishment to start a game. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you've worked and hopefully you've worked hard and, and earned that spot. But uh, you know, after you, you you do that so many times. I mean, it's it's the same. You just you're starting. It's a big deal. You're always starting. Um, 
I think winning in in your uh, uh, district and trying to go to divisionals, uh, winning those games, going to tournament is a big deal because that's when all of those towns come together at the same mm-hmm. time. And so it is like an enormous uh, uh, community thing. And a lot of people know each other from other communities too. So some of them are related, you know, there's, there's that going on, but uh, I think the district or yeah, district is everybody goes to that divisionals, making it to divisionals would be another When I, my, my high school career, we came very, very close, but we never went on to divisionals. We were, we always got, I think the best we did, I think we got third in district one year, okay. something, you know, I mean, and they were only taking like two teams, something yeah. like their fourth. I don't remember exactly. God, it's been a long time ago, but we didn't make it anyway. We had very, very small school. We had kind of a coaching slump at the time. We had a guy who was a weightlifter who was our coach. So, <laughs> okay. Didn't understand basketball that well. Though. And the other one was uh, my junior, senior year. He was a really good, I mean, he played the East West Shrine game, you know, in, in high school and was a college football player, not a basketball player. So, you know, when you have, when you have constant turnover and coaches like that, um, it's not great, but you know what? Some of the teams prior to us, the one, the one coach that we had that left just as I was going into high school, uh, they went to state. So, okay. you know, and he left because he didn't see any, any kids that were going to be very tall and mm-hmm. went somewhere else. And then came back when we graduated and his mouth dropped open and couldn't believe how we'd all grown. Yeah. And you could see there was a lot of regret there because he loved this town. Like yeah. being here. Yeah. I would I would have to say the the most imp- meaningful and impactful moment for me was my last state weekend in wrestling. Cause I had spent four years working that hard to get there. I'd made it the year before, didn't go anywhere, lost out quickly. That year I was able to get far into the tournament and my, I remember my last tournament or my last match. I knew it was my last one and it, that was emotional. And I got to do it in front of everybody, the entire, our whole wrestling community in that corner. And they, I could hear all the grandparents, all the, all the friends, all the family, they were all right there. And that was, that was my most exciting moment was having that. Yeah. yeah. Um, The question, the last one I've got, what did you always have to do when you came back from, a tournament <laughs> or a game what was the first thing you did when you went home get something to eat <laughs> yeah it, but did did you have to go check the animals first though <laughs> no that was all pretty well taken care of that yeah. that wasn't that much it wasn't much of a concern in a way that after a game you kind of got to be a gladiator in a way it was like <laughs> you know, i mean it really yeah. was you're like didn't have to do anything because you worked hard and you played hard and Everything yeah. else was taken care of ahead of time by the time you got off the bus and, and got home. Uh, so, yeah, there wasn't a lot expected of you. But next morning when you woke up, you back, to the body <laughs> back to work. Yep. No rest uh, for you. You didn't play hard enough last night. You got your time off last <laughs> night. You know? <laughs> I'm going to work you to death today. Uh, and, but we used to play b- basketball. It was back to back. It was a Friday night and a Saturday right. night we played. Yeah. You know? uh, one g- home game and one away game. That was the that was the thing is football. I I was thinking about this the other day. Football was hard. I I was getting to the point where even in high school, my body was starting to just kill me for a couple of days. Yeah. I think it's because we're starting to get bigger and stronger enough that like we were doing it to ourselves. And it was you're just, hitting harder. Yeah, and you're getting yeah. hit hard. Yeah, yeah. No, that, and that's true. And then kind of what you said, wrestling hurt because it'd be two or three days in a row of just tumbling around. And then you'd be exhausted and then like, all right, back to school. I'm like, man, I didn't even get a break. <laughs> right. I remember a couple of times, you know, taking you guys home. You guys didn't ride the bus. They're taking you home and we just, you guys would be out. Yeah. You'd eat out. like a crouton because that's what you could eat. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, maybe some water. <laughs> maybe some water. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd head for home, you know, and, and uh, you know, get get back and let you sleep on the way and start all over the next next day we usually have something to do have to come to the ranch uh get some work done get something you know that there was never there was never a time where we just laid around on a day yeah i mean that just hasn't happened well i was thinking about that too so bat football was kind of like yeah the next day you're sore but hey you know what you're gonna be moving around anyway so you'll work it out it'll be okay yeah. Uh, wrestling, we didn't even partly because it was winter, but also winter. because the only day we could get a chance to catch up on homework was Sunday. 
right. we'd wrestle Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes, sometimes it was just Friday, Saturday, but Sunday was like a homework day. We would sit there and we yeah. would just bang out homework and then, okay, back to school Monday. <laughs> yeah. So well, I guess my question to you is exactly how are we going to change this? The whole watching sports when you get here out of the oh, army. I got plans, man. <laughs> Saturdays are for the boys. <laughs> so Saturdays really worked. You know what I did yesterday? Yesterday was Sunday. Yeah. I spent all day digging post holes and putting in brace posts. And it didn't seem to bother anybody that I was out there in the heat doing that. See, that's okay. Cause Sundays we can work. Saturdays are for college football and UFC fights. Oh yeah. Well, you might have something there. It's not just a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> Remember. Fighting blue demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fighting blue demons. Well, I'm just a little lowly old. And there's old and there's only one of those in the state, I bet you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but <clears throat> all right, with that, uh, I'll hand it to you because that's that's us and sports and ranching and farming and the whole community. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing that you brought up. I didn't know what we were gonna talk about. And uh it's that 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 just brings back some memories and I could go on and on about my uh, athletic prowess when I was young, but uh, we won't. We'll save that for another time, and we won't make you pay for it, but we'll make you say and accept our thanks until you're better paid.